If you've ever taken a glancing look into the foreign players that have suited up for NPB clubs, you'll read several articles raving about some of the players of the 60s. Stanka, Bach, Altman, Spencer, and a myriad of others who helped their teams out while being generally well-loved and respected by their teammates in the media. There's also the stars of the 80s, Bass, Cromarty, Wells, Davis, Maka, Antiveros, and so on. But when you look at the mid-70s, there seems to be a bit of a gap. Sure, you have guys like Bobby Marcano, Jim Lefevre, Joe Sipin, and Mike Reinbach, but outside of them, no one really lasted more than a year or two. Ever wondered why? Well, it's because Joe Pepitone nearly ruined everything. Now, if you're a Yankees fan in your 60s, you might be a bit defensive right now. You might remember Joe as a hard-working all-star first baseman who picked up a few gold gloves along the way. What's so bad about him? Well, it was everything that came after the Yankees. His time in Houston and Chicago was... underwhelming, to say the least. And after getting traded to the Braves and promptly benched, he was fairly frustrated. Then, the Yakult Adams came calling. At this time, the Adams were struggling to draw fans in comparison to their brothers in Bunkyo, and they saw signing a former Major League All-Star as a quick fix to that little issue. It looks good on a game program, that's for sure. The two-year deal was worth $70,000 per year, which is a little under $475,000 in today's money. Not bad by any means, and more than Pepitone had been making in Atlanta. He got to Japan on June 20th and first cracked the lineup on June 23rd against the Giants at Karakuen. He went 1 for 3, drawing a walk, and committing an error. However, he did get acclimated fairly quickly, and in his fourth game against the Hiroshima Carp, he'd go 3 for 4 with a homer, with said homer being hit off Carp ace Yoshio Sotokoba, who was having a great year. The Adams' first homestand with Pepitone would begin with a doubleheader on June 30th against the Dragons. The Adams branded it Pepitone Day, obviously eager to show off their new foreign star to their fans. And in game one, Pepitone went 0 for 4. But between games, he changed out of his stuff and left. Why? He had a plane to catch. His divorce trial was starting the next day. That come out of left field for you? Yeah? Well, it also did for the Adams, who hadn't known about it beforehand, nor had they given him permission to leave. Adams' manager, Usamu Mihara, was absolutely furious when he heard the news. Said divorce proceedings would keep Pepitone in the States until early August. When Pepitone finally got back, he rejoined the Adams in Nishinomiya, where they took on the Tigers. He got a very cold reception, and it got even colder when he went 0 for 3, punching out twice. And he went 0 for 3 the very next day and was benched. He'd only get one more hit, a pinch hit single against the Giants on the 15th, before he pulled his Achilles the next day. Now, when you pull your Achilles, one of the best things to do is not do any strenuous activity that could aggravate it even more. The Adams gave him a few days off to rest, where they expected he would just chill in his Tokyo condo and come back strong. What did Pepitone do? Well, he was spotted that very night dancing at a club in Akasaka called Biblos. Now, I get it, Joe was a freshly single guy in Japan, but maybe not the best thing to do when you're A, on thin ice with your boss, B, you're injured, and C, in a place where you stick out like a sore thumb. Naturally, Pepitone aggravated his Achilles even more and left for the States for treatment. Did he get permission to do that? What do you think? Now... When 1974 rolled around, Pepitone was technically still under contract. Both Mihara and new manager Hiroshi Arakawa really didn't want him on the team anymore, but since terminations are fairly rare in Japan, Yakult didn't want to stir the pot and open themselves up to a wrongful termination lawsuit. Although if you ask me, they had plenty of ground to stand on in that respect. They called Pepitone in New York and told him that he had to be back in Japan by March 15th or be fired. Instead, Pepitone chose to voluntarily retire. And by the 20th of March 1974, the paperwork was finished and Pepitone was now off the occult swallows. The Pepitone incident would reinforce, let's just say, some uh, more unsavory 
opinions towards foreign players held by upper management, and teams would be far more cautious about going after guys, especially former All-Stars. The Pepitone incident painted a picture of foreign players in the media as disrespectful, money-hungry dipshits who didn't care about the game at all or the new teams they played for, they only wanted the money. An attitude that does persist to this day, mainly directed at Cuban players who defect at the first opportunity. While there have been worse foreign players since, <clears throat> Greenwell, <clears throat> Pepitone's legacy in Japanese baseball is that of a lazy slacker who is just in it for the money, and his name remains a byword for any foreign player who plays well below their pay grade, even if they don't really deserve it.